another episode of With the Chiefs. Wait, 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 wait. Man, I need more rest. I hope you've got, I've got your last name right there. It's a very good pronunciation. And we're back. Now, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Normally we would uh, yell, wouldn't we, Dom? But anyway, <laughs> yeah. welcome back to another episode. It's just Dom and I today. Um, strap in. Strap in. It's going to be a big one. <laughs> How do um, I follow that up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don, let's go straight in with a bit of a um, recap for you, maybe. So what uh, what happened last night? Let's start with that. Oh, last night, Chase. It was a big one. The 10,000 meter state championship. Um, I signed up probably, I don't know, a week before I sort of um, came up with the idea and messaged my coach saying, uh, would it be okay if I did the 10k state champ and they were a bit hesitant saying oh look like it's not that specific to running 100k in the mountains but if you really want to do it go ahead (laughs) Um, but anyways I I pressed on because I'm yeah just getting a bit over of um, a bit sick of trail running at the moment so it was good to kind of mix it up a bit Um, but yeah haven't really done much 10k specific training uh, and it was belting down rain um, mm, it was not looking pleasant. I completely forgot yeah. that you were doing the doing the race, and then you text me. Yeah, oh, shit, you fucking had to run in that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, but um, yeah, I got to the track, and then to top it off, they were running about um an hour late. Okay. So the race was going to be at seven twenty, and it ended up being like eight thirty. Were they trying to look out for weather or something? No, I think they were just running a bit behind because they had all the um, all these other track events during the day. Oh, okay, all right. Beforehand, yeah. like um, fifteen hundreds and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then yeah. Anyways, I had a a Red Bull on the way over. Um, Red Bull is that the first time you've hooked into a Red Bull for? That's that's the first time I've ever bought a Red Bull from a convenience store <laughs> what made you what made you go okay i'm gonna have a red well, bull never had it before yeah <laughs> I, I was thinking oh, i'll just have a coffee but i got to the 7-eleven and the coffee machine was broken so i was like oh shit what do i do now yeah okay. um and i'm not gonna have like an iced coffee because i didn't really want any milk or anything so um red bull seemed like the logical option <laughs> but uh red bull's it's a pretty crazy company like um i don't get like yeah they they put on so many events and they're, they own like an F1 team. Uh, they do all this stuff and spend so much money, but who's buying the drinks? Like that's the first <laughs> time I've ever bought a Red Bull. Well, hang on. We, weren't we pitching for Red Bull as a sponsor as well? Oh, Red Bull. No, they're, they're <laughs> great company, fantastic company. Um, and no, it's true. You don't see yeah, someone like, like or maybe I, I'm just because I don't drink it myself. Yeah. Maybe we don't. Maybe vodka Red Bulls? Like... <laughs> I've had I've bought a lot of vodka Red Bulls in my time, um, so maybe that's like their main kind of revenue stream is the partying sort of scene. But, maybe, um, yeah, it, interesting you, uh, business model. I hadn't heard anyone using Red Bull or it being mentioned in sort of the running scene until um, I followed uh, Mick Chapman. Oh on, yeah, and he was mentioning it and about the benefits and or sort of using it for fuel yeah but other than that i hadn't really seen it before which is interesting mm. and obviously yeah i haven't heard any other runner being like before before a race or training session mm. yeah and the other person i've seen was um i think lucy charles barkley i can't remember her surname she's a triathlete Oh yeah, she's sponsored by Red Bull and actually uses Red Bull. I yeah. can't tell the correlation there. If she wasn't, think, probably wouldn't use it. But um, yeah, I don't know. There's a guy that came third at uh, UTMB, uh, Tom Evans. Yep, he's sponsored by Red Bull as well. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So how was it? Was it good? Well, I was. Yeah, I was g'd up. But I feel like um, with Red Bull, you get really energized for like the next hour. Yeah, and then you kind of crash a little bit. Oh, um, did you know it was, so you, you did, you didn't know it was running behind schedule. No, I didn't. <laughs> and, um, it was pretty confusing at the track as well. Like usually you have to check in and stuff, but they've gotten rid of that, which is kind of good. You just have to rock up 10 minutes before you race now. Yeah. Um, but then there was like a rumor going around saying like, oh, they're going to be merging the, the men's and women's races. So a um, rumor. 
a room. <laughs> people go, I just imagine people at the track going, guess what they're going to do. <laughs> That's and then literally, well, the next person, next person, guess what they're going to do. And by the end of it, it's like, there's no more race. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened though. Like someone just came up and like tapped me on the shoulder and said, "Hey, like I heard that uh, they're merging the men's and women's race." <laughs> um, but and you're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Oh, what?" <laughs> like I just finished my warm up because I thought they were running like a bit late or whatever. Yeah, um, I was like, "Oh shit, better get my spikes on." But then, um, yeah, I put my spikes on and ended up just standing around for another, I don't know, half an hour waiting to race. Um, but I feel like that's kind of what happens when you do those races um with athletic new south wales it's yeah like i think they're, they're struggling um and they've got a few little issues but um hopefully they'll get on top of it because like it's a state championship as well and the field like wasn't that deep like yeah. i guess everyone's doing other stuff and it's a bit of a tall order to say come run 25 laps around a track yeah but there was just the one race and um, it was like Drew Fire was pretty much on his own. On his own, yeah. Yep. I think there was one other guy who, who went with him, um, who yeah was having a crack at sub thirty, but uh, didn't quite sort of play out for him. I guess with the conditions, it was terrible. Yeah. Who was Not it? Much you can do. Or uh, what's his name? Um, Dylan Offord. Uh huh. So he's he's still pretty young, I think, like a couple of years out of school, but um, pretty talented. He's run like. 20 minutes around the bay and stuff like that yeah so right okay he's got the potential um but yeah uh my race i um went out thinking oh i'll try and go um, 32 minutes ish yeah like i felt like i was capable of that in good conditions so um i went out and ran the first k with um nathan breen who's a triathlete and i think he's a pretty good runner as well um but he yeah kind of like we were trading like two laps each sort of thing um and went through 5k in 15:55 or so <laughs> quick yeah which is good that yeah. would have been like good pace but yep. then um yeah started to slow a little bit and i guess like it's just a long time to stay focused as well at 10k like yeah. um especially on the track yeah. especially in the rain yeah <laughs> i felt like like yeah like I just kind of had like a little slip in con- concentration and stopped paying attention for a moment. And then next thing you know, he's got a 10 meter gap on me. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, I need to pick it up to close that gap and just mentally couldn't be yeah. bothered. So um, kind of ran a couple laps on my own. And then um, I was like, oh, kind of like slowing down a bit because being out there on your own just wasn't very fun. No. Um, was it like puddly and... It was pouring, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was bucketing. It was pretty much a swimming pool, mate. Yeah, Um, jeez. But... (laughs) Was it puddly? Was there a little puddle there? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so um, slowed down a little bit. And then the guy coming uh, fifth, um, like, caught up to me. Uh, I think his name's Oscar Bukovinsky. And uh, probably butchered that, but... (laughs) Probably. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, me and him were working together for the rest of the race kind of just going lap for lap. Yep. Uh, and then with like three laps to go, I kind of put in a bit, a little bit more of a surge and yep. um, yeah, ran away from him um, and ended up running 33.09 for fourth place at the state champs. Very solid. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> fourth best runner in New South Wales, <laughs> <laughs> technically. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was a bit of fun. Um, I was wearing, yeah, spikes as well because... Um, I don't know, apparently that's like the regulation or whatever, but yeah. it seemed like no one really cared. Um, although, yeah, everyone uh, up the front was wearing spikes. So, um, okay. I don't know, I guess to make it official, you have to wear spikes, apparently. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. No vapor flies. No, in hindsight, I probably should have just worn vapor flies though because my calves are wrecked now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was bit of fun in the rain and it wasn't that bad um yeah like kind of cools you down a bit and stuff but yeah yeah that's how it all went down (laughs) so the um red bull review red bull review yeah didn't mind it yeah um yeah it was all right like i crashed a little bit but was still kind of like definitely more awake and ready to go um so yeah red bull gets the tick of approval (laughs) when was when was the point in the race where you were sort of being like, I don't really want to run any more laps around the track. 
Was it um, once you split 5K pretty quick, was there sort of... when What's that point for you where you start like... Being I feel like, yeah, like I kind of... um That slip-in sort of concentration and then running on my own at about, yeah, I think it was like 4 or 5K. Yeah. Um, that's when I kind of... My attitude kind of shifted and I was like, oh, like let's just finish the race rather than let's go run a fast time. Yeah. But having running with someone else made such a big difference. Like, cause you, you're focusing on something else. Like when you're in the lead, you're like, okay, like let's get through just this lap and then you can have a bit of a rest and sit behind someone. Um, whereas on your own, it's just like you in your head and you're not thinking about anything else. Um, so yeah, I think having something else to focus on, uh made a big difference yeah you're right you're right when you say you're in your head that's that's when the problems start coming up yeah it's when you literally feel like you're living in your head yeah it's i remember i remember off the back of the marathon even though i did give quite a lengthy (laughs) 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 recap but the yeah when you start when i started falling off the pace and then also on my own, that's, yeah, you, I felt like I was living in my head. And then mm-hmm. that's when sort of a lot of problems come up. Yeah. Um, I just don't know how you combat that, to be honest, sometimes. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, it sort of feeds it when you are on your own and, you know, you are slowing down. Mm. So it's like hard to, I don't know. Yeah, I guess, um, yeah, I don't know, it's a tough one. <laughs> but you just got to have the right kind of thoughts and uh, intentions and yeah, I guess knowing that it's going to get hard and being kind of g'd up for the race, stuff like that. That might be one of the things that distinguishes a really good race mm. is your ability to sort of mm. ne- uh, mitigate that a Absolutely. little bit, and yeah. which gives you sort of like maybe if I think of your 5k when you ran your PB, mm. it's probably no room for it was probably no room for being like, um, well, I just want to get through this. You. Do you feel like you were more in the zone if you can remember it? Compared? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, felt like there was like one lap where I kind of um, zoned out a bit, um, but then yeah, I quickly sort of snapped back into it, and it was like there's only a couple laps to go by then, so it was like yeah, just tough it out. I feel like the five k though, it's a lot easier Different. to just stay focused on it because yeah. like it only really gets hard at like three four k. Yeah, and by then you can kind of see the finish line anyway. It's like there's only three or four laps to go. So yeah, true, true. Yeah. It's a um, bit different. Yeah. Whereas the 10k, I think you really need to be on. And I feel like when I ran the um, Sydney Harbour 10 last year, my 10k PB in that race, I felt like the whole time I was just ready to like kind of fight and have a go. Yeah. Um. Yeah, which is I think it's just mental as well, like that mental headspace is important yeah for sure um but yeah that, that was the day out on the track and we saw um yeah one of the listeners as well out there wayne cooper he oh said, wayne um, he said he's enjoying the podcast but uh had a some feedback yeah um tell us <laughs> he said that <laughs> the charlie doherty episode the audio cut out at like 60 minutes or something so he oh, said shit. Um, it's a great podcast, but technically poor and uh, <laughs> sort that shit out. Wayne, please. <laughs> if I can tell you one thing, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're spot on. We, we, we will work. We will strive to make the technicalities better, especially. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, Wayne, off the back of your feedback, um, we've ditched Riverside. Yeah which was an app that wasn't really working correctly and in Australia just for some reason. a lot of technical headaches, yeah. I was going to give a reason, be like, because of this, but it, it's not because of that reason. I think I'm a technical expert. Clearly not. <laughs> but anyway, now we're using um, Zoom, so hopefully... Much more reliable. Mm. More reliable. Um, and then we're going to try and do most of them in person. Yeah, which yeah. is the best we might, outcome. We're scoping another spot, not in sort of my um, apartment as yeah. well. Yeah, that could be cool. So yeah, watch this space. Watch one. this space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's race day in a nutshell. Good. Sounds good. So you, you still, you sound pretty happy about it. Yeah, I think um, it's good effort in the rain. Yeah, going into it, there was no like expectations. Like it's not the goal race. Like I signed up. For to it on a whim kind of thing so did you just want some um variation yeah just yeah i think so like yeah. i miss 
doing workouts and like pushing myself. Um, I feel like the hundred K stuff, it's just, you're trying to just build up your aerobic system yep. and all of the other stuff doesn't really matter. So it's and that's much, fun part as well. It's a lot, there's a lot of fun in the other stuff. Yeah. That's what I kind of enjoy quite a lot. But, yeah. um, you, you, it's not long to go. No, like three very weeks. Very close. Now. Yeah. Um, yeah, but looking forward to doing it. Like it's been a long time coming. Yep. Um, but then, yeah, keen to kind of hook into some track races as well. Yep. Yeah. Cough machine going off. Sorry, another technical. Um, um, so how was the week actually leading up to what was the rest of the week look like? Yeah. So Monday was a rest day and we drove home from Bluey's. Yep. Um, yeah. After the steel cap trail run. <laughs> Do you like my little addition in the description? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always whenever I... If anyone listening wants to know who's done the description, it's always... Every time there's I have a, a little I, jab I, I have a, Yeah, there's always a subtle dig at Dom. <laughs> so that's how you know. <laughs> and uh, Tuesday was a easy double. So I got out at lunch um, for like 20 minutes and then got home and went for another half an hour jog. Um, yeah, I miss just running at lunch. Kind of breaks your day up and you come back into the office in the afternoon feeling a bit more energized i feel like um in the past i've just feeling that been feeling that kind of afternoon crash Mm. um recently so yeah just starting to incorporate that a bit more and the coaches said yeah that's fine if you want to do that so um yeah a bit more doubles coming that's actually the lunch nothing i've gotten into in the but like you do just crash Mm. in the afternoon yeah absolutely it would just lift you up a bit and it does yeah it gets gets the body moving 100 percent. yeah at your desk sort of mm. Mm. you used to do that all the time yeah yeah like, that was your staple I always yeah used exactly to see. yeah and um i feel like it kind of like yeah it gives your day a bit of structure as well like yeah um i feel like yeah if you're just at your desk all day sometimes um yeah it can just turn into a bit of a blur yeah. whereas like if you're doing this and then that like your mind can kind of focus on those particular things a bit easier yep um then wednesday was another double but it was a bit rainy so got out at lunch for a rainy double and got soaked and then um put my wet clothes on in the afternoon and ran home um and i didn't really have any jacket or gear or anything so um had to commute the next day in the morning because my car was still at work and i thought okay today i'm going to wear a jacket um yeah put the jacket on and everything and was ready to go and didn't rain a drop it was uh, <laughs> dry as a bone so i was just was it one like, of those jackets that insulate all of the sweat yep yeah it was like <laughs> decathlon kind of heavy sort of raincoat um but yeah i yeah just felt pretty uncomfortable on that run like sweating bullets the whole time and was just kind of hoping it would rain actually <laughs> so i could get some use out of the jacket <laughs> Um, and then that afternoon got down to the track with arthur and uh arthur's wanting to do more speed work so we said we'd do um five six hundreds kind of like just flat out yep with five minutes rest in between Ooh. um so like yeah it, fast yeah yeah i think like the first one was like 139 which is like 240 kind of pace Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and then the second one was like uh, 143 and then the third one was 141 but um arthur didn't quite make it through that one i think he was starting to struggle a bit <laughs> yeah and i had knew i had the race on the weekend so i was happy to kind of just call it quits from there um so arthur went on and did a few more 400s and i just jogged around with the turbo guys um, nice which is cool it's good to be yeah back running with the turbo guys like i miss that yeah um having that yeah community vibe and just good chat from them um makes yeah. a difference absolutely yeah i love that and yeah it was a fun day on the track and then friday was like a another kind of easy day um it was a bit rainy so i just sat on the exercise bike for 80 minutes like very easy i think i was doing like 70 watts or something so it was just pretty much turning the legs over yeah um and then yeah saturday raced um yeah solid and the track um 
Are you helping Arthur out a bit with the workouts in yeah. terms of scheduling or, or what, what they're going to look like? Uh, a little bit. I gave him um, the program that I did in the when I was getting coached by Jerome in the lead up to um, the Sydney Harbour 10K. And yeah. then I did like a fast 5K off that. And like, oh, that training, it's, it's really hard. Like those sessions um, huh. where, you, yeah, really going like lactic. Um, it's like, yeah, different sport. And, uh, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to get faster and that's the way you do it, but it's just bloody hard. And, um, in fact, just mentally it's the hardest cause you have to really G yourself up during those sessions. Um, yeah, but yeah, he's got that program to follow and I think he's going to, um, roughly follow it, but just kind of do his own stuff. Sure. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah I was chatting to him, um, in Melbourne, it likes the flexibility side of things to mm. just because obviously depending on what program you go for and who you coach by mm. there's a very specific tendency mm. in terms of like do you need to stick with it mm. um and i think that's good to have the sort of um like accountability up front or the knowledge that if we're doing this we have to stick to it for example yeah or we can be more flexible it's mm. good to know up front so but there's many ways to do it it's, yeah. it's really individual as to like what works for your lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, anyway. Mm. So solid training week. How are you feeling leading into UTA? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the rain jacket thing was, uh, yeah, having that rain jacket, the one that I've got, it's pretty heavy. It's like, I think 600 grams or something. Um, so I think in the past having to lug that around in the pack, um, was a bit of a mistake maybe because it like, I think you, you want to just minimize the weight that you have to carry. So 600 grams is relatively substantial. Yeah. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like, yeah. So I looked into lighter, uh, more sort of compact rain jackets and, um, I think the one that I got was pretty cheap at the time. And at the time I was just thinking, oh, I just want to do this as cheap as possible. So I got all my mandatory gear. That's for- not on character at all. <laughs> what are you talking about? Wow. <laughs> Very unlike you, Dom. Yeah. I know, completely like out of character. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think I got all my mandatory gear for like 200 bucks. Um which, yeah, I don't know. In my head, I'm thinking, oh, geez, look at me. How good it's am I? These guys spend <laughs> thousands over there. <laughs> but it's costing me more now because I'm going to have to replace that jacket um, for something, yeah, that's Sorry. a bit more no practical. Comment. No comment. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I got yeah new jacket on the way, um, which is exciting. And, yeah, going to get out after this podcast for another big long run. And How yeah, far? Uh, oh, I think it's three and a half hours. Where you? What are you planning on doing? Mm, I don't know. Um, it says to try and get stairs in. Okay. But I don't know. Where Where would you go for? I got no idea. Um, well, you know when we when we do seven bridges or is it seven bridges? Yeah. And there's a section in Lane Cove where you go. Oh, it's probably not enough stairs, is it? Never mind. No, it needs to be a lot of stairs. Like a lot of stairs. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was speaking with Beck and she was saying that um, in Lavender Bay, there's like some big stairs or something. So I'll go have scope scout it out. that out. Yeah. yeah. See um, yeah, what it's like. But yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, also shout out to Beck. She surprised me out on the track. Um, she said nice. she wasn't going to come. And then after the race, she, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was nice. But... Yeah, UTA, feeling okay. I don't know. Just kind of want to get through it. Yep. Because I only recently found out that you're doing the the 11K or whatever it is as well. Yeah, yeah. Which is a bit contra- not controversial, but I'm just like, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think um, it's 11K is on the Thursday morning and then the 100K is on the Saturday. So okay. I think it'll work out all right. Yeah. Yeah. Should be, should be fine. And should be able to get a good feel of what the further stairs are like so practice yeah exactly so how are you planning on you are you racing that like is it you're gonna race it yeah okay so okay so i was gonna think maybe you just like scope it out or no i think if like 
as like a, a policy, if you're on a start line, you're going to race it. Yeah. Like there's no point in kidding yourself. No. Um, I think that I've done that in the past saying like, oh no, I'll just take this as a tempo, but it, it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> like, I don't know if I said on the podcast when I, probably, I probably have, but when I was preparing, I think it was a few weeks, what Sydney, Sydney half. And yeah. I asked Sally, can I do Sydney half? And she's like, I don't think it's a good idea because yeah. I was just coming back from COVID. I was like, I'll just tempo it. You know, I wouldn't have tempoed it. I would have yeah. gone like raced it probably. Or even if mm. I did, which is actually a really good call on Sally's part to sort of say, I, it's a bad idea mm. because a recovering back from COVID and B like, if you go too hard, I'm just not going to recover Yeah. to hit Tuesday, which is like a big, so yeah, like there's definitely, and I just know, yeah, I would have probably raced it. And it's very hard to hold back when everyone's like, yeah. And it's a race and everyone's got their bibs on. It's almost like you're cued to yeah. run. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. And it's just like, yeah, good vibe. Like yeah, everyone's yeah, like yeah, yeah. ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, it's like when you feel amazing running 330s in a marathon and then you blow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. Maybe you should have gone into that one thinking, oh, it's just a tempo. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what about you, you Smitty? How's Me. <clears throat> the week back been? Week back has been pretty pretty good, like treating it just as a mental mental reset. Mm. Obviously not much running. I ran sort of um, Monday, Tuesday I had off. Wednesday I ran 30 minutes easy. Um, legs are feeling still pretty still pretty heavy. Like quads are still pretty wrecked. Um, I think I said in the driver activity, they're still in Victoria. They certainly, <laughs> they certainly felt like they were. Um, then w- Thursday I walked with mum. So it's like sort of a day off. And then Friday did 40 minutes with Martino, our good friend Daniel. Mm-hmm. Um, legs are feeling better, like feeling much better. Quads are sort of at that point felt like they were recovering. Yeah. Um, how did um how did Rosa go? Rosa, yeah, she, I didn't mention it in the previous. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we did go to record like a, a segment <laughs> after, but it was too late. We would have just cut in and like, oh, and uh, sorry, I forgot to mention my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Good pickup, Dom. Um, Rosa ran really well in Melbourne. She ran a PB in I think it was thirty nine, thirty nine like fifty. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so big PB. That's she's proper running. Proper running, exactly. Um, she's been doing sort of getting the benefits of doing 1K reps with monitored pace. So normally she'd be like, I'm jogging. And I'll be like, no, you just like put a bit of, you know, you can, she still doesn't know how much she can push herself, mm. which is, and that's what she's figuring out. So for example, we'll do like what in training, we do like five by one K with like 500 meter walk. Mm. And then like, it's showing her that she can run. For example, she would only be able to run like eight minute 30 per K Mm. and feel like that was fast. But then when we do the one K reps, if she pushes herself a bit, she'll run like seven fifties or something or seven forties. Cause there's a cue to run faster faster, and she can sort of turn her legs over better. We did, I think, two or three of those <clears throat> in the build-up for Melbourne. Um, and she's getting fitter. Like she's saying, my lungs are feeling better, like just jogging. So yeah. she's starting to see... Because she was training up until Gold Coast. Mm. So she's been doing it for a while. Yeah. And But now she's seeing the, the benefits of like getting aerobically fitter. Mm. For example, she would do a lot of Pilates classes previously. And then in those classes, now she says... You know, she, oh yeah, I feel like better because her cardio's improving. Yeah. But but the coolest thing is, she's kind of just learning to love it a little bit, like it, and now wants to go running. That's cool. Yeah. So it's really it's really good, um, and it's just something I love doing in the morning. It's just go. What, what does Dad call us? Dad calls us like Laverne and Shirley. It's like because <laughs> we spend too much time together. It's like a. Um, it's a TV show back ages ago. These two, <laughs> classic dad, and we had um. Anyway, 
but yeah, she's really enjoying it and starting to see the benefits come through, um, which is good. It's 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 a really nice thing. Yeah, um, it's an interesting point. Like um, not knowing how to gauge pace. Yeah. Like I feel like that's kind of like a, a common question that people ask when they're sort of starting out running. Like, what pace do I run these reps at or whatever? Yep. And um, it's kind of something that you have to just sort of experience for yourself until it is it's a fear it's a it's like a experience yeah you can't like when that's the thing for example when i read when i read the marathon book there's a lot of things in there that make a lot of sense but you don't truly understand until you go out and do it Mm. and you train and you realize like this is this sort of pace zone yeah based on this feeling Mm. it's not always going to correlate to you know heart rate or anything yeah it, it, you kind of intuitively feel that a little bit more mm, than definitely. anything yeah and mum's going you can tell mum's going through the same process as i went through as probably most runners go through in the initial phase has been like not knowing how much you can stretch yourself mm. and she's got a long way to go it's never too late yeah <laughs> it's never yeah. too late she has also thing is she has arthritis Right? right which you'll see her sometimes at night like not being able to stand up properly after dinner or something because her right. legs but the movement helps so much mm. like the running she's like i don't i say to her i don't know how you run like sometimes you can't walk properly yeah wow but it's something like the running has actually strengthened um her feet a little bit because mm. she's not used to putting pressure like that just yeah. walking yeah so it might be look this is all me guessing obviously <laughs> but she says she feels better mm. um and feels worse when not exercising mm. but she's always been exercising doing classes and stuff like that yeah but this is just a new dimension to that mm. but yeah in summary mum did very well we're gonna we've got to pick another race another 5k mm. i feel like the race anchors you so much mm, yeah. because it's hard to, for me, it never worked to, I've, I've said like, for example, when we were training for the Sydney, Sydney, um, uh, sun run mm. initially, mm. it was a thing that like G'd me up to get, I want to get into yeah. training and how do I get faster and yeah, all yeah. these sorts of things. And we then, had like a couple of goals as well, like yeah, sub 45 and then sub 45 beating Adrian. Yeah. That was, that was, that provided a lot of motivation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you kind of, by doing that, you get tricked into becoming a runner. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> by the end of it, you enjoy it. You're like, oh, shit. I don't yeah. want... When's the next race? Yeah. And then that mum's going through that same thing. She's like, what, now what do I run? For? What, are, what am I training for now? I'm like, yeah. oh, let's pick another... I'm trying to be like, 10K. He's like, no, Luke, no. I'm like, come on. But anyway, one step at a time. Yeah. One step at a time. But um, yeah. Good awesome. stuff. Yeah, very yeah. um yeah a lot of joy in that for sure mm. so then i think that's two runs you've done in the last week did you do anything else or what was that friday so yeah today ran 60 minutes with otto actually which is good oh, cool. just having a chat catching up i haven't seen him for a little bit um after even though we live next door but um <laughs> we both he sort of works different times i work different times but um that was good legs are still i, I did the classic my I'm oh, feeling great. I'm I'm back to normal. Like at the beginning of the run. <laughs> yeah. And then I think about fifteen minutes in, I'm like, yeah. Still stiff. Still sluggish a little bit. But yeah. feeling like not soreness, just general because haven't really done much this week. Mm. So other than that, the plan is I'm not sure if I talked to you about it, to do speed. Mm. 5k mm. yeah had caught up with sally had a chat about it um yeah probably going to target i don't know a fast 5k mm. in the, in this sort of next few months keen to a lot of the logic for that just came around i hadn't really done it properly in the past like specifically trained for 5k so it mm. might be something to do yeah sub 16 <sighs> yeah i'm, I'm yeah I'm pretty keen to go sub 16, but, um, yeah, with a bit of, cause what Sally said is I could be, 
you never know, I could be carrying some fitness that into this that I haven't realized yet because I did, you know, a lot of solid training and who knows when it, it'll hit. So, yeah. Um, but also keen to vary my training again and mm. do some speed and do some different things because yeah. obviously last time it was a lot of just tempo work. Mm. Not that that's a bad thing. It just actually, and I was talking, I don't know if I'll do another marathon until like late next year are we bringing it up or yeah yeah <laughs> plans for the future where are we going dom well uh yeah on the weekend after the steel cap race i was thinking um yeah planning to take some time off next year and go traveling and uh was kind of a bit inspired by watching um berlin so yeah just signed up for berlin <laughs> next year um <laughs> We're going to Germany. We're going to Germany. Chiefs on tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I hope Nico's not listening to this. <laughs> He'll be very offended. <laughs> um, it's super, something that's super exciting Yeah. is to travel and do a marathon. We'll be both hitting the marathon training at the same time. Yeah. Be like the good old days. Um. Mm. Oh, fastest marathon course in the world. In the world. So no excuses. No excuses. I think that's a 2.30 kind of, sub 2.30 kind of course. Surely, surely. Um, surely by then. You never know what will happen, but that'll be always in the back of the head. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty excited for it already. But, Mate, uh, it's going to be huge. Yeah, I'm yeah, keen for that one. Yeah, so we've revealed it. <laughs> <It's a big laughs> reveal. We should do some clickbaity <laughs> thing like... Chiefs reveal. <laughs> it's like, click, click, click on the video. Chiefs reveal where they're going, which marathon they're doing. Everyone sees them just like, fuck these idiots, seriously. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, good. Anyway, to recap, to top off mine, I guess, yeah, keen to do some speed. Mm. I don't know what that looks like with Sally, but I'm sure it'll be, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but it sounded like um, before Canberra, though, you were doing more yeah. speed stuff and you were kind of enjoying that. I was. I don't yeah. know why. I I hated it at first and then I sort of started seeing the benefits of doing it. Because mm. uh, other thing I was talking to mom is you don't realize how much you improve. For example, Canberra, I ran 74, 58 mm. or 56 mm. and I split like 74... 10 in the marathon yeah wow. sort of thing even though you know it went backwards but mm. you know it's it's such a gradual sort of thing mm. but um i enjoyed doing because we did a lot of one minute 45 one minute 45 like vo2 max intervals mm. with like double rest so it's almost double rest three minute rest yeah so that was almost like 600 meters hard yeah um which i felt like i got a lot of benefit from mm. Um, and then it was weird on those reps, how much, how you actually warm up, like your Mm. lungs warm up Mm. to running hard, like, and going lactic. Yeah. So I would start warming up and Sally was, when she pointed it out to me, um, sort of like three, four reps in, I think Mm. you start to warm up. Yeah. It's it's, it's sometimes it can go the other way. If you go too hard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) But I feel like, I don't know if you're only doing like a, I don't know, four or five reps. It doesn't matter that much if you blow up. No, no. But I had to do sort of six to eight. Yeah, then you don't really want Then I, I would never go out like yeah. too hard because yeah. it's just misery mm. trying to run hard on the back end. Yeah. But yeah, keen to see where the next sort of two, three months takes me mm. in terms of fitness. Mm. Hopefully get a nice 5K race under the belt. Mm. Go from there. Yeah, sounds good. It's kind of a tricky time though coming into summer like there's not as many races around Mm. um other than like track races but yeah sally's also keen for me to get on the trails as well oh yeah on some long runs to get some strength in Mm. Um, but i think that might come later yeah that'll be keen to do even Mm. though you know at the best of times i don't like any variance in terrain like when there's an oval that has a bit of undulation <laughs> yeah. and you're like mate this is fine and i'm like no i can't i'm like I'm losing my footing 
<laughs> have, have a big cry. But um, I think that'll be fun to mix it up a bit. Yeah. As well. Definitely. Um, yeah. That's all I got. I think we will... Any changes? Any shout outs or I don't know anything to note um, no I think that's about it oh good luck Chris Gat. yeah Chicago Chicago that'd be interesting tomorrow I think like um, Pat Tiernan's running as well oh yeah yeah he's got like a 61 62 minute half marathon that's his debut yeah so yeah I reckon he could Big. go pretty well yeah, yeah he, that'll be interesting to see here's the did he get the Australian record for a little while, I think, for the 10K? I don't know. I think he had it for like a month or two. <laughs> you know about my running knowledge, <laughs> <laughs> my running journalism, Dom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, but Chicago will be interesting. Be and interesting. Good Chris luck is, to Chris. Yeah. Good luck, Chris. Put in a solid, very solid block. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope it goes well. We'll, we'll find out. Mm. Yeah. 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 What's the course like? Do you know? It's I fast. Know. Yeah. Fast? I think the record there is like 203. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like New York or something or. No, I think it's like, kind of underrated. Like it's, um, yeah, it's in America. So it's all like English speaking and stuff. Yep. Uh, and it's a fairly fast course. So I think what Galen Rapp ran, ran like 206 there, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Mo Farah ran there, ran his PB there. I think like 205, 206. Okay. Um, so it's quick. Yeah. A lot of people go there to run PVs. Solid. And hopefully Chris is one of those guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, it was a good episode. I yeah. enjoyed that conversation. We'll yep. be um, back next week with a guest that we haven't scheduled in yet. Yeah, secret guest. <laughs> secret guest. <laughs> Click to know more. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even what they say, the influencers, is it? <laughs> Click to know more. Who's <laughs> ever said that? <laughs> All right. Until um, till next time. Stay fast. <laughs> stay strong. And stay know. fast. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.